I've been trying to destroy America for years and it's just not working. <laughs> Why isn't it working, Mr. Devil? Because of him. It's him. Thank you. God bless you. Ah! Thank so. you, God bless America. This is a perfect encapsulation of everything the evangelical Christian movement represents. A generation of children that are just being attacked by Satan and, and the evil left uh, with horrific things, not only abortion, but now gender uh, mutilation surgeries and horrible medications. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard a statistic, so I've got to go back this up, but we're data-driven here. 4,000% increase in the amount of psychological... Um, uh, counseling stress related to children 11 years old and younger in gender um, confusion. 4,000% increase because it's being happen. marketed. It's being marketed. Yes. It's ever since God was taken, prayer was taken out of school, which is, is such a failure. Look at the, look at the slide in, in our, basically the soul of America to the point where we're soulless. We don't have a soul anymore. And children are being confused to the point where they're actually falling for this uh, horrific lie. The man behind the devil puppet talking to Marge right now is Lance Wallnau, a leader in the evangelical community and grifter, piggybacking off of Trump and the MAGA movement by infusing religion and politics into his decades-long career as a businessman. Uh, I think God's taking people that are on the back bench and putting them on the front bench, putting them in the big game, taking people from obscurity and putting them on the field. And I think he's sending us to the places where there's a great door of opportunity, but a lot of adversaries. And San Francisco is a place which needs mercy, not judgment. And, uh, and that's the reason why it is a, it's such a capital, I think, for like the, it always has been for the homosexual movement, because its redemptive gift in San Francisco is mercy. Wall now posted this insane Super Bowl prediction video where he tries to link a win for the 49ers to God's plan for Trump's reelection. And yes, you heard that correctly. So if it's three points, that's close. But I'm thinking I don't like the three. Three numbers not good because like the arrows smite three times. It means a lack of resolve. We can't have another lack of resolve. If Trump is getting back into office miraculously, we cannot just love tap three times. We have to really be resolved that something big is going to happen. Now, uh, think about this. Seven would be a good spread for a point spread. Seven mountains. I mean, I am being accused of being a dominionist all the time. Let's just believe God's going to do something all seven. Five is mercy. So I'm going to say seven. Although that's that's a lot of strikes of the arrows. So it could be four, four years. Four years of mercy with Trump. You can't make this stuff up. Putting any sort of spiritual significance on the point difference of a sports game should be a major flag. But because numerology is a hallmark of many sects of the evangelical community, Walnow's prediction is par for the course. Third year they won. And they won at a stadium, Vegas. Guess what the stadium address is? Three, 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 three. Four threes. So it's it's third time they've won, and they won it in a stadium which is three, three, three. Al Davis Parkway. Now that his prophecy didn't go as planned, he will now spin another equally bonkers theory to cover for his faulty prediction. This is the third win for the Chiefs with 333 yards taken in the game. Done at the address, 3333 Alliance Stadium. I think maybe God is saying there needs to be an alliance. Maybe it's three streams. Um... Maybe it's a threefold cord that isn't quickly broken, but the number three is so pregnant on this event. Of course, how could we miss such an obvious prophecy? Too bad Walnow's point about an alliance falls apart once you figure out that the stadium is actually named Allegiant Stadium after the airline that spent millions to buy the naming rights. Guess God forgot to tell Wall now that. The real problem with schmoes like this is that they deliberately prey on the most vulnerable people in society to enrich themselves and push their religious agendas into political and public movements. There's nothing wrong with being religious, let's be clear. But there is something very wrong when religion is wielded as a weapon to push for things like this. We know this country was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. We know the truth. Therefore, we stand for truth and will never be deceived. We will never stop fighting. 
We will never, ever, ever give up or give in. We will take our country back. We decree that America's executive branch of government will honor God and defend the Constitution. We decree that our legislative branch, Congress, will write only laws that are righteous and constitutional. We decree that our judicial system will issue rulings that are biblical and constitutional. We declare that we stand against wokeness, the occult, and every evil attempt against our nation. We declare and we now take back our God-given freedoms according to our Constitution. Lance Wallnau was on stage while this dystopian Christian nationalist creed was read at a Flashpoint live event in Atlanta in 2022 and is no stranger to conflating politics and religion. But the revolution started. It's a Christian populist uprising. I say Christian because it won't they won't know it's all Christian. It's primarily Christian because it's going to be wrapped around with all the people supporting Trump. But the uh, primary mover in this is going to be 50 percent of it is going to be believers who are contending for America and seeing what the devil's doing. Donald Trump will be working, I believe, with this movement state by state to clean out the weak Republicans who are selling out the uh, populist movement to save America. All this photography, dramatization, it just looks so orchestrated. I'm suspicious yeah. that the devil isn't in this moment trying to slander the church like Nero sending Christians to the lions in Rome. His takes on January 6th play into the already held conspiracies of his audience while simultaneously defending and promoting what happened. Lance, you were at the president's speech uh, this morning. Did, did you feel that he was inciting the crowd to storm the Capitol? It's the exact opposite. So uh, now it's law and order time. Here's the weird thing. It is law and order and nobody's right. As a matter of fact, some of these photos, everybody posing on the uh, Capitol steps with their flags and everything. I know it's freezing cold out here. I appreciate you. He's a little more. I'm going to bore you with this, I know, but I've got to give you the facts. And he's going state by state and making the fraud case clear brilliantly on how many dead people voted, how many underage voted, how many out-of-staters voted. And, and uh, people were, th I was embarrassed because people were so frozen. They were threading their way out. They've been there since 7 a.m. And I turned around, but there's like a half a million, there's like 200,000 people behind me. And the president keeps saying, can't we let the security loosen up a little? Let these people come up in front. Let the people get near. I mean, he didn't mind the people coming near him. So far from stirring up the mob. Lance Wall now is just another religious conservative blowhard who serves as a clear example of the Republican Party and the broader conservative movement spent so much time and money over the years cozying up to zealots like this.